Okay, so let's proceed to King Edward the Sixth, the son and jewel of King Henry the Eighth. So he was the male heir of King um, Henry. He was born on October 12, 1537 in London, in London, a king of England and Ireland from 1547 to 1553. So Edward was King Henry's only legitimate son. His um, only male heir and he has a siblings namely Mary the first and Elizabeth the first but since he was the uh, male son so he is the uh, considered the legitimate son his mother was Jane Seymour who died two years up uh, I mean two weeks after his after he gave birth to King Edward the sixth although Edward has traditionally been viewed as frail child who was never in good health some recent authorities have maintained that until several years before his death he was a robust athletically inclined youth so although um, King Edward was born to be a frail child frail child who was never been um, good in health so which means that King Edward since he was a child he always considered a lot of sickness and um, illness which is although he was um, a frail child or considered a frail child he was a robust and um, athletically inclined youth so that's very sad in part of um, King Edward because as a as a king and as a ruler you should know a lot of sports and you, you need to deal a lot of pressures especially in um living in the forest um in terms of survival and a lot of um pressure activities but then i guess king edward doesn't experience that because of his health conditions so his tutors sir john check sir anthony cook and Roger Ascam found him to be intellectually gifted, so although he was not um, gifted physically fit and active, he was um, intellectually gifted and a precocious student in Greek, Latin, French, and theology. So although he was not good in some physical activities, but then he was good in language, which are Greek Latin theology and he was also good in French which is of course um, very advantage as a king because you need to deal especially there are matters that you need to deal in so you need to be um, socially active and to socialize with a lot of persons especially around or to your neighbor countries so by age of 13, Edward had read Aristotle's Ethics in the original Greek and was translating Cicero's the Philosophia into that language. So since Edward was on his 13th age, he was able to read Aristotle's um, Ethics in the original Greek and translated it into um, language of his own which is Cicero's the which is the Cicero's the Philosophia so imagine um, a child of 13 years old was able to read Aristotle's Aristotle's work and was able to translate that in a Greek language was very um, amazing on January 28 1547 Henry the died and Edward then age 9 succeeded to the throne so after King Henry had died at the age of 55 he was um, King Edward was the next successor at the age of 9 so imagine having a king ruling the whole country at the age 9 was very um, was such a very challenging part of a child henry had decreed that during edward's minority the government was to be run by a council of regency but in fact edward's uncle un uncle 
Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset, will hold the almost supreme power as regent with the title as protector. So, since um, Edward Seymour was given the power, so he received the title of being a protector. So, he was the uncle of King Edward the Sixth. Um, he was the brother of Jane Seymour, a mother of King Edward. So, factions so soon developed around the king. In 1549, Somerset was overthrown by the unsculpturous John Dudley, Earl of Warwick, soon to be um, Duke of um, Northumberland. So, um, since, since King Henry died, um, he gave um, Edward Seymour the title to be he gave um, say um, he gave Edward's uncle a title to, to be the protector in January 1553 Edward showed the first signs of tuberculosis so um, during in January 1553, Edward showed um, signs of tuberculosis, which he was not able to perform well. And by May, it was evident that the disease would be fatal, so which means that it cannot be cured. And working with number Northumberland, he determined to exclude his two half sisters, Mary and Elizabeth, from the successions and to put number the Northumberland's daughter-in-law Lady Jane Grey and her male heirs in direct line for the throne. So he, um, King Edward doesn't um, support Mary and Elizabeth to be next in the throne. Instead, he put the Northumberland's um, successor or daughter-in-law Lady Jane Grey and her male heirs to be the next for the throne instead of his um, siblings. As a result, a power struggle erupted after Edward's death. Lady Jane Grey ruled for nine days from July 10 to July 19 of 1553 before she was overthrown by the popular Mary I. So since Edward told them that he would not allow Mary I and Elizabeth I to be the next ruler of the throne, he gave the position to um, Northumberland's successor or lady or Lady Jane Grey but then he was able to um, rule for about nine days only and then he was overthrown by Mary the first who reigned during or who reigned from 1553 to 1558 um, Edward displayed the potential for effective administration but many scholars have felt that had he lived his religious zeal and extreme obst obstinacy might have imprinted a much firmer and more uncompromising Protestantism of the Church of England. So they have um, discovered that Edward the Sixth has is a good is a good ruler. So that would be all for my presentation. Thank you, and I hope you learned a lot in this chapter one. And see you in the next chapter. Bye.